Mike Edgar from Hampton. <laughs> I'm Randy Cushing from Winnicott Road in Hampton. Uh, Tom Sherman from Rye, New Hampshire. Tom Lockman from Hampton. Jason Jaron uh, of Seabrook. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and congratulations on your election. Uh, you've got a lot to do over the next two years. Uh, it's talking from somebody who's been up there in the right. past. Uh, it, it's probably the best best education you're ever going to get. <laughs> and uh, uh, enjoy the ride because it could be fun or it could be bumpy. So, Mr. Chairman, just at the outset, I just want to acknowledge and thank Tracy Emmerich and Phil Bean for their yes. service to the town. Um, I think that oftentimes we don't say thank you enough to people who make the kind of sacrifice that you know. Jim knows uh, is involved in doing their doing that work, and I just they they both worked really hard for the town. And um, elections are tough sometimes, winning or losing. I, I I know that, but I just Phil and Tracy really served Hampton. Well, thank and, you. and I would like to add uh, thank you to Dan Ennis for his service over the last two years. Yeah. Very good. Thank you very much. I think what we what we, we kind of look for is what you guys have for. Uh, proposed legislation that you, you, you're going to look at, what, what you're thinking about, and then I'll, I'll bring it to the, uh, our board to see if they have any questions. So, okay. whoever wants to start first. I think I'm the dean, so I'll start first. I will just tell you that the, that the, you know, the first piece of legislation that I had drafted this year is the, the bill that would restore a portion of the state's uh, contribution to the retirement costs for uh -huh. police, fire, um, and, and teachers. Um, you know, it's been, I, someone said promises made, promises kept. Mm -hmm. The promise was made and the promise wasn't kept. And I, I'm somewhat optimistic that by, um, by the end of this year, that there will be at least a, a, some incremental um, attempt to help re reduce property taxes, which is what that, you know, that, that, that property tax increase that was imposed by the legislature in 2011 when it took away that contribution impacted everybody. And I've been, you know, we lost by one vote last time. I've been really uh, pleased by the number of people who recognize that it's important for Concord to take care of the cities and towns. Um, and so that's, I would just say that was my, my priority legislation. Um, and I guess that I have some other, just I know Regina, did, we did put in legislation to continue the Seacoast Water Commission, um, which I think, and also uh, legislation to continue to try to deal with remediation and yeah. uh, to prevent migration of toxins away from the, the Coakley Landfill, you know, site. So. And then I have other legislation too, but that's <coughs> stuff that specifically impacts the town. Um, I didn't, I, I made a strategic uh, choice not to try to, uh, and the corporate welfare of next era um, in the first year because I want to focus my attention on trying to get the restoration of the, you know, contribution to the pension funds, but that's still something that will be addressed next year. Excellent. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, I had, uh, I have submitted uh, a request for legislation for uh, the the authority, if if we so desire, for the town to be able to uh, increase the the parking fees at the parking on the parking meters at the beach, um, in an effort to uh, increase the funding that comes back to the town to help to defer the costs. Um, th this is a proposal that came to us. Um, Nancy Stiles had, had received the information, the, the proposal from a constituent, um, you know, with the recognition that there's, there's always concerns uh, about the parking fees. And so it, it, is, it is just an authority to, to do that. Um, and so, you know, we'll, we certainly need to uh, consider the, the, the impacts of that and uh, before we, we, we necessarily do that. But it, it's it's it, it's to give us the opportunity to do that if we so desire. Okay. Um, I would add uh, on the Senate side, there's uh, several roles that are not legislative but more supportive, and some of those are um, I've 
been participating in the Hampton Bridge meetings. Um, I will be meeting with Parks shortly to, uh, my goal would be to make sure that you all have all the advocacy and support during that process. And so working closely with the select board and making sure that your voice is heard at the state level, I think is really important. Uh, it's one of my roles. Another role is to make sure that in the budget, we are addressing uh, both the mental health and opioid crisis. Um, mm -hmm. We have one of the lowest Medicaid reimbursement rates, which is the funding that supports Seacoast Mental Health and a lot mm -hmm. of the other area services. And as many of you are aware, we really don't have a lot of services here or down in Seabrook. <coughs> so making sure that those that uh, the state remembers that Seabrook and Hampton um, are part of the state and that they need the help, uh, especially on those two me uh, those two medical issues, uh, is a role that I'll be doing both through the budget, hopefully, and if not, we'll be pa uh, introducing legislation to make sure that happens. So I hope to work very closely with the board in um, in representing your needs, especially at the transportation level, on the bridge. Um, and any other issues that you might, and the beach, of course. Mike, you. <laughs> Good evening. Um, I wanted to mention the uh, some work that was tried last year, but in, now it's kind of evolved into something a little bit different. It has to do with trying to get some type of uh, occupancy fee. It's going to be difficult. It's not going to be in the meals and rooms tax format it would be more in a hotel fee or we're talking to, to Fred about it quite a bit some other so we'll we'll see how that goes it's it might have a little bit of a shakedown uh, uh, cruise on that one trying to get it through the first time so um, there is uh, I'm also uh, along with, with Tom on the uh, the Seabrook Hampton Bridge Advisory Group in fact we're meeting again tomorrow yeah. and uh, but uh, Hopefully, uh, and I feel pretty confident I'll be reassigned to the uh, Public Works and Highways Committee mm -hmm. and be involved with the, the bridge from that respect also. Um, but with, with the Public Works, with the bridge, <coughs> and also with the, you know, the ongoing studies and hopefully work on Ocean Boulevard and, and, and those areas that, that is coming up. It's, uh, that, mm -hmm. that's that's, to me, that, that's really important. So that's what I plan on you know, concentrating on uh, as far as you know what's what's coming up it's also when you start talking about the bridge and some other things it's i hope this year to be able to spend a little bit of time on just analyzing the revenue that we have coming in because i think that that when people start talking about well let's have a falling bridge or let's do this or that um there there, there is a money issue yeah. you know when it comes yeah. to the, those type of projects so. mm -hmm. thank you mm -hmm. oh. <clears throat> Thank you, Tom Lockman. Uh, one of the concerns I have, uh, and I know people on the Seacoast share it, is the difficulty in filling open positions. Uh, and I think that is in part related to uh, our family friendly policies, you know, and that we have uh, an education policy in terms of full day kindergarten funding. It's still not quite there. Uh, so, looking to ensure that full day kindergarten is fully funded across the state, regardless of Keno revenue making sure our UNH tuition uh, is under control so we don't have the highest in-state tuition in the country. Yeah. And uh, with regards to getting Hampton's fair share back, we have an opportunity when the budget comes through the House to ensure that the meals and rooms tax revenue distribution catch-up formula is not suspended as it has been in yes. many of past years. So uh, I have gotten to know up to 32 young electeds like myself who are looking at this with fresh eyes and clear heads and and this doesn't make sense to them so I'm gonna do the best I can uh, to be a thorn in the side of anyone who thinks that's gonna slide through the house quickly and easily without our money coming home um, with regards to family friendly policies I want to see paid family medical leave insurance so people can care for loved ones and newborns without uh, going without wages for those precious few weeks uh, supporting Rennie's bill on water uh, commission, a more long-term water commission, which I think is vital. And finally, uh, filed an LSR today so that medical providers and pharmacists who prescribe an opiate have to disclose either through a warning on the label, uh, on the bottle, 
uh, that one, this is an opiate. Not everybody who, who gets prescribed an opiate knows that's what they're getting because mm -hmm. they go by many names. Yeah. Uh, and two, the risk factors associated with prolonged use of opiates. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's important information. We talk a lot about uh, the value of personal responsibility in this state, but first you have to have the right information. Uh, and knowing that you're being prescribed an opiate, I think, is essential uh, in this, this room to improve there. Thank you. Representative Jamron. <laughs> I'll roll over. Can you get us more microphones in class? Sure. So <clears throat> I actually am kind of lucky. I served on the Judiciary Committee in the last um, s term of the House, uh, representing Seabrook and Hampton Falls. So now that I'm in Hampton, I've done a few things. Um, I have legislation going forward now. Um, and I'm hoping that your Conservation Commission person is here. Yeah, he is. He is. Um, I received a message from our Conservation Commission chairperson in Seabrook that there was quite an issue with jet skis on our marshes during high tides going through and tearing it up. Uh, so I've introduced a bill to make that un unlawful no matter what the tide is. Great. Um, so that's one insight. The other thing is I'm co-sponsoring uh, a a bill from a Seabrook representative that allows a nonprofit that is in the same town of, of a, uh, a charity gaming place, which I know Hampton has one on the beach, mm -hmm. uh, that your nonprofits in your town will get an additional days at that venue uh, as opposed to others. Because we find that, hey, it's great that you have that at Hampton Beach, but you'll find that 80% of the people that are using that are from outside yeah. Rockingham County even. So we're trying to, to get a little bit more for that. And along with the fundraising part of it, um, last year I introduced four bills uh, that were part of the license plate program. And if you're not familiar with that, I'll try to explain it really quickly. Um, you would go to the town clerk or to the uh, registry, and you would get what's called a decal license plate, which is 15 do additional dollars in addition to your uh, registration. Then you would go to a nonprofit organization that has been authorized by the legislature to purchase a decal from that nonprofit and then fix that decal to that license plate. So you get two things. One, selling you that decal uh, raises funds for that nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And two, it gives them visibility on the highways. So last year we did one for the Boy Scouts, uh, Dana Webster Council, uh, Granite Pathways, which has been the uh, recovery folks from Portsmouth that had a place in Seabrook at one time. Um, and we did one for Friends of Hampton Falls Bandstand, and I'm trying to remember the last, oh, Sea Coast Youth Services, which uh, serves the town of Seabrook, and the after school <laughs> programs and a lot of mentoring programs. So <clears throat> I made it no secret that I wanted to continue um, putting that forth, and we actually, at the suggestion of a Hampton resident, uh, I introduced a bill to extend that program to uh, Future Insight, and if you're not familiar with them, they're actually the New Hampshire affiliate of the uh, Association for the Blind. So that is one of my bills, another one for the Seabrook Rail Trail Group. Um, so I'm just trying to look through here. Um, and uh, I think that's the last thing is, and I think all of us at the table uh, recognize that the legislature was not very nice to some students at uh, Lincoln Aikman in Hampton Falls in mm -hmm. 2015. And I, I'll leave that alone, but if you go to Seacoast online, you'll see the bad history. Uh, we've all decided that we'd like to put that bill forward again on behalf of those students who are now Winnicunit students and see if we can get the uh, state raptor named as the uh, red tail hawk. So um, we'd love to have letters to support anybody that wants to support that. Uh, we <clears throat> we'll let you know where you can send those letters of support emails to that committee that's hearing that bill. Uh, I think it's really important that these youth understand that, hey, sometimes you lose, but sometimes you can win at, after mm -hmm. all. So. Uh, thank you very much. And if there's anything you need, uh, all of us have our emails at the legislature, and you can let, let us know what you need. Questions from the board? I have a couple of thoughts. Um, I certainly appreciate that effort to get funding again to put against retirements for our public servants. What the towns and communities are doing is building up debt, building up a lot of debt, mm -hmm. since we're the sole uh, source of helping. Um, red listed bridges are a very sore spot with me. 
Uh, they say red listed bridges, which means in my mind that the bridge is ready to go, needs to be tossed out, and yet the state drags and drags and drags and drags along on replacing the bridge. It, it's a joke to me. What are you gonna wait till it falls in the river? So I'd like to see a little more pressure put on the state on, on the bridges and be a little more proactive. Um, Route 1A, uh, f when Fred gave us our materials for tonight, there was a, a, what do you want to call it, a, a notice that the state's talking about extending or uh, re, re, refurbishing 1A. They're going to repave Route 1A next year. Oh, next year. What are they going to do? Is the state going to just throw a top coat on? Yeah. Especially at Hampton Beach on 1A, and you've got sinkholes there, and there's a big drainage problem there, and what are they going to do about the sidewalks there? And I'm just thinking about the, the, the lower, well, that whole stretch of 1A. <coughs> I'd like more specifics on that. If they're just going to come by and throw a top coat on, Stay home. Um, the uh, for you, Mike. <laughs> the I think that's Mike Edgar being on the Public Works and Highway is going to be it. They're Michael, planning on a three-quarter inch overlay from the Massachusetts state line to Dumas Avenue. Both sides. When of, did they? That was <clears throat> when did that? <clears throat> that, that? I'll send you a copy yeah, of it. I, it came from Division Six just yeah. last week. Okay, it's the first time yeah. I've heard. It's, it's part of their paving program for the division. It's. Wonderful too. Yeah, this is a regular <laughs> paving program as they rotate yeah. right through. They, That's correct. Yeah, well, it's going to waste a whole pile of money if they're, if we're still going to have the sinkholes and all the messes and the the improper drainage and all all the other stuff they've got down there in that road. And um, the I just want to mention because this really got me excited. The rail trail. I know you mentioned about a rail trail. This this thing has really been annoying me, and I got the memo from Fred uh, over the weekend, and I've been reading the darn thing, and I think this is terrifying, and I don't know what other communities do. But uh, they're talking about the railroad right of way, which is what we've got in Hampton. Post-construction, establish a protocol to ensure that future workers Perform, performing maintenance or construction within the right of way are made aware of the need for the appropriate uh, things, posting of signage, and they're talking about the um, uh, contamination, which never occurred to me. But this is an article that says, Arsenic and Old Railroads. Is the state of New Hampshire going to let lead arsenate uh, arsenic solution, arsenic weed control sprays, arsenic laced slag used as b railroad bed fill, lubricating oil and diesel that dripped from the trains are likely sources of the petroleum product found along the lines. Other sources of contaminants associated with historic railroad operation may include coal ash from engines, creosote from ties, and polynuclear aromatic hydrocarbons from the diesel exhaust. And it's telling us that we're going to have to have our inspector, when all this is being done, figure out all this stuff. What are we doing? What is the state of New Hampshire doing? This, this is, I think, Fred can, if I may share that with you folks, you can share it around and toss it back to me eventually, but I am appalled. It sounds nice, have a little rail trail and go for a nice little walk. That scares me, folks. And now I'll shut up. <laughs> okay. um, thank you all for coming in tonight. Uh, I'm very glad to hear what all of you just said because it, uh, well, one, I'm going to just go down by, I had some notes that I wanted to discuss with you, so I'm just going to address it based on what you said. So, Rennie, mm -hmm. your bill for the restor restoration of some of the uh, New Hampshire retirement system? Yes. yes. So, last time you did that, you tried to shoot for 15%, yes. right? Yes. So, right now, the town of Hampton's debt that just mm -hmm. keeps occurring, I think we added about $2.3 to it this year, but I don't have the financials. Yeah 
is almost $26 million yeah. for our pension liability as of our 1231 financial statement. So if you got 15% of that back for us over the past three years, it's been about 6.5 million, almost 6.6 .6 million of expense to the town. So that would be almost a million dollars that you'd be, uh, yeah. in we, essence, claiming back for the state. Fre yeah, Fred, and you, the, the, the board sent a, a letter last year. I think the yes. calculation was, what, 1.3 million or something like It's close to 1.3. 1.3. I mean, I, I know that the, the number uh, for the state for a year is, is 41 million. Right. And my, my argument, I was saying, well, you just, $41 million, you just set and put $100 million in the rainy day fund rather than sending the money back to the cities and towns and right. meeting your obligation. I'm just, just send 41, you know, the money is there. I, I put, you know, right. it's not, the original 15 to me is reasonable. And it's, you know, and it's doable. So I'm, if I'm trying to be pragmatic. Right, no, that makes sense I'm trying for 15%. <laughs> So that's why I see that I, I don't, yeah. under, I guess I don't quite understand like what the problem is, not with any of you, but I, I'm glad that you're all gonna attack this again because I also have the state aid to municipalities, which I believe the town manager has yeah. copies for you if you're interested. This was an NHMA conference right. I attended and this pretty much told me that since 2008, the state stopped giving us about $700 million. Yeah. Yeah. And the two biggest pieces of that are New Hampshire retirement system and the rooms and meals, which mm -hmm. right. I know is one of your favorite topics. That's a good read. That's a good read. So, um, and school that, building aid yes. <laughs> and, <laughs> and highway you know, and waste water. I only get so much time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, so the rooms and meals alone, right now I think they said they were about 21%, like somewhere between yeah. 21 and 25%. Maybe just under 21 but getting that closer to the 40 would be substantial for uh, So there was a catch-up formula that was yeah. instituted, and it's meant to climb our way back over time to 40%, and it gets suspended in the budget process. So under law, under statute, it's there. It's just getting suspended in the budget process. And uh, in the past, some governors have suspended it in year one and let it go in year two. So, you know, that's half the battle. In the last uh, two-year session, uh, both years it was suspended so and it can the governor has first crack then the house then the senate uh, and it can be taken out or put in back put back in at any one of those phases so uh, the best we can do uh, in the house is, is make sure it's in there in the house as best we can and we can do that in the senate. Yeah. well that's great to hear thank you and there's a bunch of other things oh and thank you for the trying with the Water Commission. I think that's very important because if it's not PFCs, it's going to be the next thing. I mean, whatever we find next. So I think that's important. And uh, I really appreciate what you do, and I wish you luck. And the <laughs> revenues for the parking, that would be amazing if we could get something from that. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, Hampton is, I feel like Hampton is not the only town that has these similar problems. Maybe some places don't have it to the extent we do. But I think that overall revenue that the state is stopped giving us would be best suited just left to the municipalities so that we could help ourselves a lot right. more because we really know what's going on. Exactly, and I think that's that's a very good point. Is if we can, you know, if if we can uh, leverage what's happening in other areas as well, yeah, then we right. can, you know, we can improve our chances of of yeah. getting something through if we can you like know. even with like the mental health and I mean it's like we got the um, it used to be called the Odyssey House I can't think of the name of it now mm -hmm. and I mean that's it's a lot of you know we have I know our police department spends a lot of time over there and then when they need the assistance you know they call the state in for backup or however it works but they at the same time they're the ones that are <laughs> you know, know what those kids, what their specific issues are. So, I mean, it would be nice if we could just have some of the resources, not just financial ones, just left here to begin with, and sort of let us sustain ourselves. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Jim. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming in. You know, it's interesting, New Hampshire, 400 people in the House, citizen legislators, I love it. I think it's, it's great re uh, representation. But the only problem is, I think sometimes there are too many RSAs tried to be passed, and people lose sight of the big picture. Yeah. So I think it's really, really crucial to, to narrow in on what can be done, what can be accomplished, rather than simply putting in RSAs and hoping. You know, I would love to see New Hampshire become more of a home rule state, 
right now, as we know, municipalities can only do what the legislators, what the state allows us to do. So when you talk about, you know, adding a, a little bit to the rooms, uh, a hotel tax or something, you know, we got to go to the legislator and ask if we can do it in our own town, which I think home rule would be a lot better, I think, much better. But I really think that uh, narrowing in on the things that can get done is really important. And it's interesting, Tom, that on the, uh, what you were talking about, the prescriptions, because I just recently had two, and both of them said that they were opiates, and mm -hmm. both of them had a warning on it that it was an addictive. So is that something that already is taking place? It, it, um, unfortunately, a lot of those warnings are illegible because the size of the print is very small, uh -huh. and especially when you get into the actual disclaimer that goes with it. So this is a, a great idea. Yeah. We have we have actual evidence of people, for example, cough syrup that contains codeine, mm -hmm. um, people who actually had opioid dependency did not know that the cough syrup had um, a, a narcotic in it and uh, relapsed <coughs> and subsequently died of an overdose. So um, clear and appropriate labeling for opioids, mm -hmm. I. I support it 100%, and, and there is some labeling, but if you've ever tried to read it, especially if you have challenged eyes, which many of us do over 60, um, it makes it really hard to, to do that. Good. And the other thing is, you know, Rusty knows, I know, Rennie knows, Mike knows, people have been up there. Most of the work's done in the committees, and that's where you really got to get things done. That's where you really got to get known. That's where you really got to get support. So it comes out of the committee unanimously. But thank you for what you're doing. Yeah. I want to bring up is, is, is and it was brought up a couple times here before, is, is I think the rail trail has the potential of being an excellent mm -hmm. project for us here throughout the whole seacoast, mm -hmm. whether we continue it on through Seabrook all the way to, to Portsmouth. But it shouldn't strap the towns that it's going through with everything. And it shouldn't be that one of the things that's in there is that it, in 180 days, the state can come to you and say, we're taking that land back and you got nothing you can do about it. Mm. Why would it? Why would any town want to bring that on okay. if yeah. that within 180 days, the state can just say, never mind, we're, we're going to do something else with that property. Yeah. And you got no say over that. So I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done mm -hmm. on that thing. I'm a firm believer in the rail trail. I think it'd be great. It'd be nice to have. I was, uh, I was at the airport restaurant over in Northampton a couple of weeks ago, and there was, it was a rainy day, and there was a guy in there on a bicycle. And I, so I sat down and talked with him. He'd come over from Newburyport. He said, I wanted to try the rail, wow. the tr rail trail to see how it was. And he, he rode his bike over here, and he was riding back. And I'd, I'd said to him, you want to ride back? It's raining. And he goes, nah, I'm all, I'm all set for it. Wow. But so there's a guy that was using it in the rain. And I think if, if we had it so it was in better shape and – we could use it and promote it. I think it would have some business opportunities along the rail trail. I think that would be done. But it shouldn't be, the town shouldn't be held hostage that they need to do that. So hopefully you guys can look towards that and bring that back. If, uh, Mr. Edgar, if you want yeah. this, this is the uh, the overlay for Route uh, 1A. I'll give you this. Yeah. That will scare it's, you. So. Yeah. That's, Thank you. That's good. Uh, thanks. So, Division Six. Yeah, it's from Division Six. So yeah. that that's showing what they, they want to do as an overlay. You got any questions you want? Yes, um, I wanted to thank very much uh, Representative Cushing and Representative Edgar, along with Representative Bean, for being a, um, among a brave group of six that took hmm. on the Coakley Landfill Group yeah. on the issue of whether they're subject to the right to know law or not. Uh, and we uh, received a successful decision in that regard against many odds. Uh, in October, and uh, the uh, the other side spent sixty-three thousand dollars reportedly in yeah. fighting against us, but we were successful, and I thank you for that. Uh, now comes the time for some follow-up in that regard. Uh, the uh, now that the Copley Landfill Group has to operate in public, mm -hmm. uh, we have an opportunity to uh, influence both what they do and what EPA and DES do. Uh, DES seems to close its eyes to the reality that there may be a contribution to the PFAS contamination in aquarium wells coming from Coakley Landfill Group, mm -hmm. contrary to what our expert Thomas mm -hmm. Ballestero from UNH has had to say. 
Uh, EPA is coming around, however. They're recognizing that there is a radial contamination off that site going in many directions. And I think uh, following up on the very good work that Representative Mesmer did, uh, it's important to continue that going. Uh, to making sure that the type of things that are now being seen in Greenland with 1,4-dioxane contaminating the uh, wells on the Breakfast Hill Golf Club uh, mm, yeah. don't get forgotten and uh, that uh, we can deal with that. Um, so I think the influence of, of you folks on DES is important in that regard. Um, I also wanted to say that, of course, the, uh, the town of Hampton has had a lawsuit against the state of New Hampshire over, over items relating to Hampton Beach. Um, I think the, uh, the idea of parking revenues being raised and perhaps going to Hampton uh, to, uh, for a fair share of the burdens that we bear, both for public works, police, and fire, to support the state park could go a long way uh, to resolving some differences. Also, uh, a fairer share mm -hmm. in the rooms and meals taxes, which is a legislative mm -hmm. formula. Uh, if you look at the, the uh, sources of the monies that go into that and, and who gets them in, 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 the, uh, in the distribution formula, <laughs> it's not fair. We're not getting our fair share. Portsmouth isn't either. Uh, and so uh, if that can be worked on, that can also it's go a long way. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we really appreciate your efforts, and thank you. Ms. Diego, yeah, I have a quick follow-up. What, what scares me in that rail trail thing, and as you read it, it looks like the town is going to be holding the bag for cleaning up all that contamination. And if there's something that lingers or whatever, I don't want the town sued. That, that's terrifying when you read that and you read all the contaminants in there. Rail trails may be wonderful, but I don't want this town responsible for that mess that they're describing in there with all that contamination. And one more quick thought on these opioids. I, I was dumb enough to break my heel a couple of years back. And when I was discharged um, from the hospital, uh, they sent me home with a card. It was about like that. And it had the little bubble things on it. And I it didn't say what it was, but I'm guessing it was some type of painkiller thing. And I looked at it, and I went to Hannaford, and I turned it in at the pharmacy. So people maybe should be told that your local pharmacy, and they're very nice if, if you have some of this stuff, um, turn it in to your local pharmacy because they're very nice people, and they'll take that, and then you don't have all this medication stuff running around. I'd like to just speak about the rail trail for a few moments. Um, I don't want to take up all your time. I know you have Warren articles and everything else to cover. Um, I was actually one of the founding members of the Friends of the Seabrook Rail Trail six years ago. Uh -huh. uh, I've been working in that regard. I was also a, a commissioner at the Rock and End Planning Commission. I've worked with uh, your town manager and my town manager from Seabrook on several occasions to try to revamp this agreement that you're looking at. And I'll tell you, what you just read is abhorrent. Uh, so I will tell you that we've been fighting with the Department of Transportation to change the language and stop dropping everything onto the towns. I'll, I'll talk about a very short uh, thing. In the town of Seabrook at the state line uh, with Salisbury, Salisbury has declared their area as a wetland. In New Hampshire, it's not a wetland under our DES. DEP and Mass d did say it's wetland. And why? Um, New Hampshire DOT's property, where they have drainage ditches that they haven't maintained since 1957, uh, are inundated with s uh, silt. And they do not drain properly. So <clears throat> whose problem is it? Well, Seabrook's an MS4 town, as Hampton is. And one of the things is we have to map out all the outlays. We need to know where water flows are. And guess what? The state of New Hampshire won't allow us onto their property to look at those things. So they're making us violate the MS4 permit. Oh um, and I said to the, jokingly to the town of Seabrook, we ought to sue the state. <laughs> Sounds familiar, right? <laughs> uh, that they are causing us to, to, uh, to not follow our MS4 permit. Um, and it got a little bit of traction in, in Concord. I think they sat down with uh, Fred a couple times 
um, and we we parked out it. We parked at them a couple times at Northampton Town Hall and, and such. I did want to let you know that there is an advisory committee that's put together. It's chaired by uh, the folks at Rocket and Planning Commission, and I would be happy to have this delegation, Seabrook's delegation, uh, sit with their transportation planner to go over this document. Because as I say, uh, I, I lost track of this document almost two years ago now. Yeah. And two years ago it was, everything's on the town. Every expense is on the town, every maintenance is on the town, and I don't think that's the way that, that's not proper management of the asset. So I agree. I think having a, a rail trail is a wonderful thing for the economy, and it's a great thing for, hey, I can come up to Hampton and shop at Hanford on a bicycle, mm -hmm. or you can come to Market Basket, or you can come to Walmart, or whatever the case may be. But until the state gets their act together, uh, it's got to change. Last year, I was involved and co-sponsored a bill that would have revamped the whole rail trail uh, plan for the whole state of New Hampshire. Right. Well, it was killed in the House because there wasn't, it was in the budgetary year mm -hmm. and there was an appropriation uh, associated with the bill. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to tell you that that bill has been reintroduced this year um, by in the Senate, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe that that's going to go through. You're going to find that the Department of Transportation is going to come back to the drawing table, and we're going to be part of that conversation with them uh, and the Regional Planning Commissions, and I'm, I'm sure Fred will be involved in mm -hmm. some fashion, that we're going to revamp their whole outlook on rail trails throughout the state because it's not just us. It's not yeah. here in Hampton. It's Northampton. It's Rye. It's Stratum. It's all these towns that it goes through, and quite frankly, we're tired of getting being promised the mine and getting the shaft, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell me that the state is going to inflict no that mess on us. Well, I, anybody who thinks this town will accept that land unless they make it pristine and clear the whole thing and swear to us on the Bible that that land is not contaminated, I don't want to hear about it. And, and I agree with you, Mary, Mary Louise. Uh, in Seabrook, the, the uh, Conservation Commission actually did a project, a Greenfields project, on the railroad corridor yeah. just north of the nuclear power plant and redid a culvert. And an assessment was done of the dirt there, and there was no contamination mm -hmm. detected. Well, that's in their own words. Right. Well, here in Hampton, from Depot North, there yes. was an active rail line until yes. recently. Right. So I agree with you. There should be a Greenfields <coughs> assessment done by uh, Rockingham and Planning Commission, and I hope we can work with you on that. It will be. Mike. Yeah, I'm not sure where to start. <laughs> uh, but I guess Brown, Mike, with Brown. microphone. Uh, I'm not sure where to start, but I'll start with uh, thanking Mark for the work he did yeah. on the Coakley Plaza, you know, yeah. along with Paul Tume and, and yourself. You did a great job and uh, quite a precedent and precedent finding that they that they did. So that was great. Thank you. Um, almost everything people keep talking about relates to money. You know. Um, up, what I've seen the last couple of years is is that somebody wants something. If somebody wants something, then they got to take it from some other place. They travel. Well, what well, hasn't been talked about lately? We'll take it from there. It's a shell game. Yeah. So somebody ate the pea. If the uh, <laughs> when you want to have something done, it's going it's going to cost money, and people have to start from the ground up, like right. in towns. You start demanding some things. Because if there's not the money, then you can't do all these things that you're mm -hmm. talking about. Yep. You can't, what, you know, the bridge and stuff. Now, as far as the, the Route 1A on the, uh, uh, the overlay, you, we know that, or we hope that there's going to be work done there when we are talking about redesigning some things and, and doing some permanent work. Then if, if you don't want it, you know, paved for a while, let, you know, tell, tell the state not to pave that section now if you don't want it. Because right now it is being studied of how to fix it, so you know you have to see what you what you really want, and then I think I think our only problem is if they overlay it now, that just pushes another five ten well, years down right. the road where they mm -hmm. where they aren't going to fix it, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we're hoping we, we all want to see that get done mm -hmm. right relatively soon, and it's in the ten year plan I believe to have it done. It, it is. Year. So uh, <laughs> they don't know. They haven't <laughs> said. I don't believe. In the next 10 years. It's in the, the next, next 10, 10 years. years. So I just want to make sure, you know, <clears throat> I, I don't mind seeing them paving it yeah. if, it's, if it's a two or three year patch to get us through the two or three years until they do it. I don't want to see it push off 
further and further out in the 10 year plan that they, they plan on doing the beach. Because we all know what the beach is and what it brings to this state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, so uh, I can check on it in, in that light then, you know, if, if you'd like, and I'll, yep. uh, and, yep. and I'll let you know. But uh, again, sometimes it's what you ask for. Like we've been trying to get the rails, the trails thing going here. And if we say <laughs> that we're, we want you to make it really pristine before you, before you go out of, the, out of your way, basically, they've been trying to scrape the money together to purchase it because of the, the nature of having to buy it. Then right. they're, uh, you know, you, ha you have to wonder <clears throat> if, if in fact they would be able to. Uh, uh, where, where's the money going to come from to, to do that? I, I don't know. Take that money for overlay in it and put that towards overlay <laughs> in the, the rail trail. <laughs> oh, <geez>. Yeah, <laughs> but what I'm saying is sometimes we, you know, we're talking about things that we want or don't want, and we got to realize what what that really means. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. I'm gonna let Fred speak oh, first. Okay. He let, me, let me try to answer something on the rail trail. Uh, the, the current proposal and. The State Department of Transportation is not making these proposals. It's the Regional Planning Commission that's making them for them, trying to put it together. That money, according to the latest write-up, is coming from CMAC funds, mm -hmm. which is overlay funds used for state highways. And they're going to reconstruct the rail trail using CMAC funds, but not all of it. Only to the center of Hampton, <coughs> and then from the center of Hampton to Hampton Falls, which is the worst part, because it's out there in the marsh, they don't know whenever, if that's going to be done at all because there's no money to do it. Yes. We're talking millions of dollars out there in two yes. bridges. Yeah. So it's a lot of dollars and a lot of time, and they don't know where that's going to come from yet. And the reason there's the 180-day requirement on there is if you use CMAC funds, it's a federal requirement that the state uh -huh. has to be able to reclaim the road within 180 days, even if it hinders the town in some fashion. Uh -huh. That's just a federal requirement. So that's, that's why that's in there. What I really want to talk to you about is the, um, the Municipal Association is going to be mailing you a copy of the State Aid to Municipalities, the Histories and Trends, and I managed to get them to send me one so I could produce it for you for tonight. That's great. Oh, yes. The other thing I've got here is a request. We currently have, just as this town, it's about $90 million worth of unfunded um, state grants for water and sewer systems. And um, Thank you. Thanks, Brad. Thank you very much. A bill has been filed, Thanks, and the information is on top. They would like people to sign on. Is that for the 20%? Yes, yeah. that's for the 20%. Um, we currently have about almost $3 million worth of that money sitting out there. And of course, it's not obligated because the state legislature is seeing fit to cancel that appropriation. They have not made it, basically, to, to fund that particular proposition. There is a bill that's there on top. It's been submitted. Yeah. And the Municipal Association is asking uh, members of the legislature to mm. sign on and sponsor. And hopefully that Good. something will happen with that. Whether, even, even if it's just 10% of it, it's a help. Mm -hmm. Fred, do you know who sponsors it? Tom 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 it it's there. Oh, Bulgo. Okay, that's fine. That's good. Mm -hmm. So, yep. Okay. That's well, my pitch. One last question, Mary Lewis. Yeah, so I do have well, an observation on this Route 1, uh, Representative Edgar. <clears throat> Big problem on Route 1 is the drainage, 1A, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. The state owns 1A, and you can do your little patch if you want to and waste money doing that, but until and unless they're willing to correct the drainage on 1A, you are just wasting your money, wasting your money. And those potholes and sinkholes come from poor drainage, and somehow we can't get it through their heads. And the state owns that road from the east sidewalk all the way over to the west sidewalk. And there's a lot of damage being done there because of the lack of adequate drainage. And, and there was studies were going to be done as, as part of this, hopefully. That That's yeah. correct. Right. Right. right now, and part of that was for <clears throat> drainage. Yeah. One of the things that we're, I'm going to ask the board to ask the state not to pave it. Not because it doesn't need it. It does need some cleaning up because it's in bad shape, okay? Mm -hmm. But they, of course, have planned this. It's already past our budget time, and mm -hmm. we're talking about thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to raise all the structures along Route 1A. It's not in our budget. Mm -hmm. So what they're going to do is just pave over the top of them. That's crazy. I mean, then you got to yes. go back to dig the road up and raise all the structures. So something has to be done. I ran into the same problem up in New London when they decided to pave Route 11 up there. 
<clears throat> and we actually told them we couldn't do it because we just can't raise the structures because we don't have the money. It's the same situation here. If we default our budget, we'll be lucky if we have enough money to run the, the wastewater treatment plant. So it's just, just yeah. the, the way things happen, plus the new legislation that was passed this year that changes 4013 uh, and how you work the default <coughs> budget, that's going to hamper us in many ways too. In mm -hmm. fact, we're going to talk about the default budget a little later tonight. So all those things need to be considered, but of course the state tells us after they've already planned all this. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so we have to find a way to cut corners and not do something that's in the budget that has to be done, mm -hmm. like maintenance or something or other, and take that money and use it for some other purpose. Lean and mean as we are, we can't afford to waste money like that. That is yeah. it's really troubling. Doing it twice. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I just sense. want to add one thing, if I may, sort of a generalization. The problem with, I don't think that a lot of times people even know what Hampton wants because I know as a selectman, I don't find out about things until the decisions are already made. Yeah. And then they want a blessing for it mm -hmm. from the board. I have a huge problem with that. I don't care whether they're, you know, they're not mm -hmm. elected officials. It should come to the elected officials to make a legit decision. Mm -hmm. on anything that especially has financial implications to the town for the foreseeable future. You know, I appreciate RPC and everything they do, but at the same time, like that rail trail thing, I mean, Fred had issues with it from the get-go, and they originally had all one agreement, all the towns were on one agreement, mm -hmm. and then because they didn't like the towns, you know, getting together and... <laughs> aligning themselves with what they did or didn't want, now we all have whatever it is, five or six separate agreements. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just not how you get things done properly, and that's pretty much what happens with everything that I've seen anyway since I've been a selectman. And, I mean, that's why we filed the suit, was because we can't get, like this, one-on-one -on -one elected officials, elected officials, way better. Mm -hmm. Way better. Rusty, one more quick one. Well, we've got them here, and I appreciate okay. them coming. Yeah. Uh, the state, well, rooms and meals. We're getting shortchanged to begin with. Yep. Apparently, we are the only state park in the in a state of New Hampshire that doesn't have roll-offs on the property to collect the waste. And there is a monster volume of waste in that state park. I think Regina said to me they do, it doubled this past year. We are having all that yeah, waste are, go through the transfer station, which wasn't built that. For that, we're having the Public Works Department, which is overworked anyway, dealing with all that mess. And I see no reason at all the state owns property. Why can't they put roll-offs, find a private hauler, and take away their waste? And the state does nothing in, way, in the way of carry-in, carry-out. No supervision of you put this here for recycling and you put that there for trash. The whole thing is a mess. I think it's disgusting, and I think it's time the state of New Hampshire got off its hind end and took care of its own waste at the Hampton Beach State Park. Yes, uh, over the, the course of the summer, you know, both on social media and walking down there myself, people are sharing pictures constantly about it, and uh, it is... It's concerning that we have a, a lack of a real Microphone. waste management system, you know, uh, and especially with our staffing uh, difficulties, it right. would behoove us to uh, evaluate waste management systems, both combinations of vehicles and receptacles yes. that allow for uh, it to be collected more quickly and uh, perhaps, you know, uh, greater capacity and less frequently and all these things would help to remedy a number of our yeah. challenges. Um, and we get crumbs uh, for rooms and meal. Mm -hmm. is, and the, Mr. Jacobs is back there going crazy with mm -hmm. all his staff yeah. trying to keep the beach clean, and it's nothing but a dreadful mess. And I think they'll find it, it would pay for itself in short order in the sense that we're, we're paying for less labor uh, and we're collecting less frequently if it has greater capacity. And a less messy beach. That, that too. Yeah. Well, Representative, Senator, thank you for coming. Oh, what, no, one more thing. One of the things that, you know, for the past couple of years, uh, Mike and I have been doing is having office hours at the library. Yes. Um, because we invite <clears throat> members of the, you know, public from the community. We want to hear from them. And we're, I know the four of us are committed to continuing to do that. And we invite, you know, Jason and Tom to come. And I, did you get a schedule February yet? February 9th. So, 
February 9th. Mark, your, mark it now so you'll know that you can come meet with your Hampton legislative delegation at the uh, Lane Memorial Library. Excellent. Can we have on the calendar? Certainly. Yeah. What time? Uh, 10 to 12. 10 to 12. Saturday, February 9th. February 9th. Yeah. We'll have that put on our calendar. So, again, if anybody's looking at our website or our calendar, that, yeah. that would do that. Anything we can do to help you guys out? Thank you. Mm -hmm. We're a phone call away. Yes. The uh, Hampton uh, Circuit Courthouse is oh, yeah. coming along. It's probably everybody's seen. It's, oh, it's, good. It's yeah. really right now. They're looking at the mid this month doing a, uh, hopefully the occupancy permit will be able to be issued. Wow. They're going to start moving furniture in. We don't issue gonna, that. <laughs> I, yeah, but I was letting you know. <laughs> and the, uh, and they're going to do the commissioning. They're going to be doing the commissioning. Good. And then, uh, Hopefully they'll start actually maybe picking up business around the 22nd of January. Yeah, Excellent. Yeah, Excellent. moving in. So just a little heads up. I just want to, <clears throat> I'll plan to be at the uh, the office hours. Good, good, yeah. But I also, uh, unlike, I guess, we share multiple towns. Uh, I have 11 towns in my district, so <laughs> it's a little hard for me to be completely on top of this, but I would encourage any residents, any of you all, to reach out to me if there's, a place you need me to be or want me to be, um, I'll make every effort to be there. I'm happy to come back uh, as often as you need me to come to the Board of Selectmen meetings. My goal is to be available and advocating for the town along with the delegation in the areas where <coughs> that can really make a difference with your relationship with the state. Yeah. All right. And Rennie and Mike are very brave yes. because I do go to their, <laughs> their <laughs> options, opportunities. Uh, uh, Representative yes, Senator, thank you very much for coming in tonight. We really appreciate it. Thank we look forward to working with you.